I've been coding for over 10 years and I wish that somebody would have told me the things I'm about to tell you. If you follow my channel, you know that I'm highly prolific. I'm constantly building something new. I'm constantly learning. I'm getting my master's in AI. I'm a senior software engineer and I'm doing things like climbing Kilimanjaro all my spare time. So I wanted to share the things that actually help me do all of these things. A lot of it boils down to one overarching truth. I have designed my environment such that learning and creating are automated. They are just embedded into the fabric of my day. So if you watch to the end, I will give you no b the actual things that I believe are contributing to my ability to create things. Most people treat social media like entertainment. I treat it like a training algorithm for my brain. Because everything you watch, even this video, is training your brain. It's training your attention span, your tastes, your goals, even your standards. So here's the question I want you to ask yourself every time you see something. Is this actually what I want to train my brain on? If the answer is no, this is the part where you need to do your part as an adult and unfollow, mute, block, do whatever it is you have to do. And I'm not talking about grind set, sigma, alpha male content only. I'm very much not a fan of that. What I mean is, does this align with who you want to be? On Twitter, I usually use lists. I literally have builders list, the funny people list, and this is the only source that I actually look at when I go on Twitter, and it's entirely curated by me. I do not look at the for you algorithm, and in general for every platform I try to avoid these to the extent that the platform allows me to. So today I encourage you to just take five minutes, scroll through your feed, and remove 10 accounts that don't serve you, and instead interact and engage with the accounts that do serve you, the ones that are more like the person you want to be in the life you want to build. Whether that's humor, engagement, creativity, building, whatever it is, I guarantee you that over time you will feel the difference in inspiration. My next piece of advice is to follow the itch. At no point in my life did I sit down and say, today I'm gonna learn JavaScript. What actually happened was I wanted to make something. There was something specific that was interesting to me. Sometimes it was serious, sometimes it was silly, and that desire and that pull always gave me infinitely more energy than sitting down and looking through documentation ever would. And the reality is that coding languages are going to come and go, frameworks are going to come and go, and the tools are always going to change. But the one thing that will remain constant is taking a messy idea that exists only in your head and turning it into something real and usable in the world. If you're asking, what should I build? Here's the answer. Build something you actually care about. Even if it's small, even if it's dumb, you can even copy something tiny. Just remix it and make it yours. You learn way faster when your brain has an actual reason. People think the goal is to never be stuck. That's wrong because being stuck is where the learning actually happens. Every time you hit a problem, your brain is forced to form a hypothesis, test it, read an error message, search, ask better questions, and debug like a scientist. And the reality is that loop that I just described is all of software engineering. That is the job. It's not about the programming language. It is about that loop. And in order to be good at that loop and to get better at it, you need to put yourself in situations that bring you into them. So I would say there's a delicate balance here. If you're trying out projects that aren't difficult to you and that aren't pushing you, maybe you need to up the difficulty. And if you're doing things that seem impossible and you have no idea where to even start, you're going to have to boil it down to something that is the perfect mixture. Building an intuition for what that is will get better over time. You just need to start. And if you can keep yourself in that zone as long as possible and do it consistently, you will be leagues ahead of someone who is solving every leak code problem or somebody who watches 200 tutorials and doesn't actually build anything. I used to think it was mature to do everything alone, totally self-driven, no help, no external pressure, only internal motivation. That sounds cool, but for me, that, that fails in real life. I know we all want to be that person who doesn't need external motivation, but biologically, we are social creatures, and it is okay to want that scaffolding. And for me, here's what that scaffolding looks like. It looks like classes. I'm doing my master's in AI. It looks like building things with my friends because it's more fun and more motivating than doing it alone. And posting videos like this, because if I say I'm going to ship something, there's a lot more pressure for me to ship it. If you're trying to learn in the leftover part of your day, 
the end of the day when you finish everything else, your phone's probably gonna win. So here are some scaffolds that I actually do. One, accountability buddies. Just set up a weekly call on the schedule and it might feel awkward at first, but just stick to it and commit with it. Do it with someone you really care about and love and have fun with because that'll make it a lot easier. And once you have it embedded at some point, it's just a part of your time. Two, I really like sharing things publicly. I really fall under the camp of what's the point of building something if I'm not going to share it. And sharing has a two-way relationship where you may not know it, but you watching this video puts a healthy pressure on me to want to keep doing this. Share something small. Three is hard commitments, things like classes, cohorts, etc. Uh, there is a financial barrier sometimes, but a lot of times you can find classes that actually aren't that expensive or even reading groups that are free. So your goal isn't to be a robot and find that deep motivation that costs a part of your soul. And instead, it's to make your goal embedded into your day. This is the last one. You need to be using AI, but there's a right way to use it and there's a wrong way. The wrong way is build this entire app for me. And then you paste it and pray. And then when your app breaks, you just ask it to fix it until it does. And that is just not learning. That builds dependency. And honestly, this is something I have to keep myself from doing every once in a while because I have felt myself become a little more dependent upon AI than I want to be, but I've done a good job of making that separation and using it very consciously. The right way to use AI is as an infinitely patient tutor. Here are the exact prompts I use. One, explain what this code is doing step by step I'm learning. Two, what pattern is this? Where else is it used? Three, assess my knowledge on this concept. And here's my rule. Never paste code that you cannot explain. Use AI to unblock you when you need it, but make sure that you also use it to explain how it unblocked you so that the next time it happens, you don't need to go to the AI. So for a recap, curate your social feeds like a training set. Two, follow the itch, do things you're interested in. Three, get stuck on purpose, treat your learning like the gym. Four, build scaffolding so you don't have to rely on just motivation. And five, use AI as a tutor, not a crutch. Now I wanna know, what do you genuinely feel like is the thing that's stopping you from building things that you wanna build? I'm happy to talk about it and I'm sure the other beautiful people watching this also wanna help you out. So comment and I'll do my best to reply. I hope you go outside and I hope you spend time with your loved ones. Peace out.